can do more with white rice. You can put it on your chicken and fry it. Crispy rice coated chicken. So it's gonna be extra crispy and juicy. Because this rice needs to really stick to the chicken, I gotta create a dredge. Two cups of all purpose flour, a few teaspoons of my house seasoning, that's paprika, onion powder, garlic powder, salt, and pepper. It goes well on anything. Three eggs in this bowl. A half a cup of whole milk. Mix that up. Take my crispy rice cereal and put it in this bowl. I like to put just enough in there, but I'm gonna also have to crunch this up. This is definitely an unexpected way to use rice. All right, I'm gonna add a little salt and pepper to my rice cereal. All right, so I have eight drumsticks. What I'm doing here is taking my drumsticks, coating it in the flour that I have seasoned with my house seasoning, putting it in the egg mixture with the milk, and then coating it with the crushed rice cereal. So you can only imagine how crispy this is gonna be. My chicken is coated. I gotta wash my hands like I've been working. <laughs> I have some peanut oil over here heated to about 350. That's the temperature that chicken or anything that you fry fries best at. I'm gonna fry these until they're golden brown. I like them when they're pretty and golden brown and you don't wanna overcrowd your pot or your oil because if you do that, it's not gonna fry evenly and it'll take a long time for the chicken to cook. This is where I like to stop, right here. It's golden brown, it's juicy, I'm not gonna dry it out. I'm just gonna finish this off in the oven. And I have my oven to about 350. I'm gonna add my next batch. Again, I have my oven preheated to 350 degrees. I'm gonna let these hang out until they come to temp. My chicken is done. Oh, now look at that. Perfectly cooked rice coated fried chicken. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I want you guys to hear the crunch. Listen to this. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. You can do more with white rice. You can put it on your chicken and fry it. Buffalo chicken meatballs topped off with a buffalo sauce and green onions. So now I'm making my chicken mixture and the veggies that's gonna go inside the chicken mixture. I have two stalks of celery, half of a green bell pepper, and half of this onion. If you don't have a food processor, just mince it up really finely with your knife. That looks good. I'm gonna also grab my spices and breadcrumbs. I got two pounds of ground chicken. I'm gonna add my veggies. I'm just gonna use a little bit of my house seasoning. I'd say about that. <laughs> One cup breadcrumbs. These are unseasoned. Let me just mix this up a little bit first. I'm gonna lightly beat two eggs together. This is gonna help bind that chicken together along with the breadcrumbs. Okay, I'm just making sure it's nice and mixed. All right, so I got two sheet pans here that I have sprayed with nonstick cooking spray. It's gonna help the meatballs, of course, not stick to the pan, but also it's gonna get a little crunchy, little texture to it. All right, let me wash my hands. All right, so I have my oven preheated to 400 degrees. I'm gonna bake these chicken meatballs for about 20 to 25 minutes or until it's like golden brown. Now I'm gonna make my very simple buffalo sauce. Got a saucepan here. I wanna add a stick of unsalted butter. 
If you want it a little less spicy, use more butter. I'm gonna use some hot sauce. I'm using this entire bottle because I'm gonna drizzle this sauce on top and I also wanna have a little extra sauce on the side. And I'd say about a quarter cup of Worcestershire sauce. Add this to your buffalo sauce and I promise you, you'll never go back to just eating butter and buffalo sauce. Add the Worcestershire and it's gonna take it up. Get that distinct color. I like to taste it, see if I need to add a little bit more of that uh, Worcestershire sauce. Oh, that's good, it's tangy. Not too spicy in my opinion. I think the adults are gonna love it and it's gonna taste so good once I toss the meatballs in it. I'm making fried chicken wings with sweet potato waffles and I'm gonna dip the wings in a barbecue sauce and serve it with some maple syrup. Shut your mouth. I'm excited. All right, so I'm gonna make my chicken like my grandmother makes hers. Have eight wings that I've seasoned with some salt and pepper. I'm gonna give it a mix with my tongues. I'm doing it old school like my mama and grandmama do. Get some flour, dump it in my bag. I'm gonna add in about a teaspoon of my house seasoning. Okay, give it a shake. Add my chicken wings. Shake it up. You know what, I don't know what it is about this bag, but honey, it coats some chicken beautifully. It's the way my mama did it, this is the way my grandma did it, and that's the way I'm gonna do it. Just dropping my wings in the hot oil. It is imperative that this oil is extremely hot, otherwise you will have a greasy piece of chicken. They take about 10 to 12 minutes to fry depending on how big your wings are. For me, this is gonna take about 10 minutes. Last wing. I'm basically just frying it until it turns a golden brown color. You also know that your chicken is done when the chicken starts to float. I'm shallow frying so it won't necessarily float, but I can tell by just the color of the chicken. So I'm making a sweet, tangy, more so sweet than tangy, barbecue sauce from scratch. So I'm using this whole can of tomato sauce, some ketchup, a concentrated tomato flavor, got some Worcestershire sauce, some soy sauce for a little salt, some apple cider vinegar for a little tang, a pinch of garlic powder, a few pinches of onion powder, some brown sugar, dark brown sugar. I want a lot of that molasses flavor. And last but not least, maple syrup. I mean, it is chicken and waffles. Let me add a little pepper to this as well, and a pinch of salt. Give it a whisk, and as the tomato sauce cooks, it'll darken up once that molasses and brown sugar and maple syrup start to cook. And of course, I have to taste it, make sure it's right. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear my foot. Man, that's good. It's tangy. It's sweet. I'm gonna turn the heat down. Let this simmer on low for about 30 minutes. While that's simmering, I'm gonna tend to this chicken right here. So once you flip it over, it'll take a little less time to cook. These wings should be done in about four minutes. The wings are done. Look how golden brown and pretty these are. All right, so these are done. I gotta get started on my waffle batter. I got two cups of all-purpose flour in here. I'm gonna add in one tablespoon of baking powder. I have a teaspoon of cinnamon. I'm adding the cinnamon to this sweet potato waffle because I want it to kind of taste like my grandma's sweet potato pie. And a quarter teaspoon of salt. Give it a whisk. Now for my wet ingredients, I have a third cup of unsalted melted butter. Two cups of full fat buttermilk. It's a buttermilk waffle, mm-hmm a tablespoon of that brown sugar, and I got one medium sweet potato here that I have boiled and smashed, and two eggs. Give it a whisk. All right, now I'm gonna add my wet to my dry. All right, just give it a whisk until I can get some of that flour chunks out. This is gonna be kind of a lumpy batter, and that's okay. Mm, it smells well, so good. Hey, yeah. girl. Oh, yo, what is going on? <laughs> PJs. I know. And y'all got, got you. We got you. Yeah. Yeah. 
time. Okay. Oh, this is cute too. You imagine yes. the look at yes. yes. little corny. Yes. Okay, well, take your jackets off. Get comfortable. Okay. He got me PJs too. <laughs> what did you make? Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna put that to the side and finish. Okay. It. Finishing it. I'm gonna finish up. Come on in. Okay. All right, so I decided, you know, we was gonna go to that chicken and waffle spot. I know, right? my favorite spot. I'm gonna do it here. Let's okay. See. But I did it a little different. I made sweet potato waffles. What? Uh huh. And I fried some chicken wings over there. So, yeah, I'm putting this batter inside my waffle maker here. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Ooh, it came out well, perfect. Oh, you smell it? Yeah. Do you smell that? It's so golden. You know how I do. Oh, that little ringer. Got my barbecue sauce over here. Watch your back. Ooh. Chicken wing. Oh, you Save do it. Right. Okay. Yeah. Get a little jalapenos. You guys Ooh. like pickled jalapenos? Oh, look. All right, got a little syrup. Oh, Beauty. spirit fingers, y'all. Come on. I'm making oven fried Carolina barbecue wings. I'm making a simple coating for the chicken wings. Now, because I am putting it in the oven, it's okay to, to put flour on top of that. Because guess what? That flour and the seasoning is gonna help keep it nice and crispy while it's in that oven. And I'm baking it at a high heat. So you kind of get that same effect of deep frying without all of that, you know, extra oil. Just used about a cup of all-purpose flour, teaspoon of baking powder. So I'm gonna add about two teaspoons of my house seasoning. Got some smoked paprika, pepper, granulated onions, some garlic powders in there, and some salt. I have three pounds of chicken wings. Super simple. Just give it a light coating. So while these wings are baking, I'm gonna add a Carolina barbecue sauce. It has mustard, brown sugar, a little spice. You can put some hot sauce in there. It's just like a tangy but sweet barbecue sauce. I have my oven preheated to 425. I'm gonna bake this on the center rack for about 30 minutes. While that's baking, I'm gonna get started on my Carolina barbecue sauce. Of course, mustard. Got some of that brown sugar. Some granulated sugar. Apple cider vinegar, it's real tangy. Some whoosha whoosha. Add a little saltiness. And some hot sauce. Got my burner on medium low heat. I got about a little over a cup of yellow mustard. I'm gonna use a cup of light brown sugar. This Carolina barbecue sauce is gonna be sweet and tangy. I'm gonna add about a half a cup of granulated sugar. Some Worcestershire sauce, about a tablespoon. Third cup of apple cider vinegar. and a few dashes of hot sauce. I like it a little spicy, not too much. But that sugar is definitely gonna help mellow out some of that spice. Use my whisk. Now, the longer you cook Carolina barbecue sauce, the darker it gets. So it's gonna get a golden yellow color. All right, so there's really nothing else to do with this. I'm gonna let it simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes. My sauce is looking great. I'm gonna take the chicken out of the oven, brush it with a little bit of the sauce, pop it back in the oven, and let it cook for an additional 15 minutes. Look at that, and they almost look like fried wings, see? And to think they're just getting started. I'm just gonna take some of the sauce and mop it on there. Mm -hmm. Look at that color. It's gonna continue to get crispy. Gonna lock in some of that sauce and that flavor. Ooh. And you know, I'm gonna flip them over and do the same thing to the back. All sides meet love. You know, along with the dip, I think this is gonna be a hit. I'm just gonna flip them over and put some barbecue sauce on this side. And actually, I'm gonna put it back in the oven like this, skin side down, so this side can get a little crispy too. My oven is still at 425. I'm gonna pop it back in there and let it bake for an additional 15 minutes. The wings are almost done. 
Ooh, look at that, y'all. To make sure that these wings are extra crispy, I'm gonna spray it with a little cooking spray. The oven is still at 425. I'm gonna let it bake for about 10 more minutes. Ooh, do you hear that? Now you tell me these weren't fried. Mm hmm The first thing I'm gonna make is chicken noodle soup. I am shredding this entire chicken. The wings, the thighs, the breast, but I'm not using the skin, especially like in soups and stews. It makes it really fatty and there's like a film that forms. What I usually do is just eat it as I go. <laughs> I'm gonna put one and a half cups in this bowl for my chicken noodle soup. Now I'm gonna chop up my veggies. I have one stalk of celery and I'm gonna cut up this entire onion. That's pretty fine. Roughly chop some parsley. If you use dried, you wanna use a lot less. Dried herbs are much stronger than fresh. Head over to the stove and get this baby started. I'm gonna add a little olive oil to get my onions and celery started. Add a little salt to help draw some of that water out of it. I'm cooking my onions down until it becomes a little translucent, a little soft. So the onions are nice and translucent. A little garlic powder, some onion powder, a little bit of the Italian seasoning. It has basil, parsley, oregano. Last but not least, the chicken bouillon. I'm gonna use just about a tablespoon. Because I am not using a chicken stock or a chicken broth, I gotta break this down with some water. I'm using five cups of water. I'm basically, creating my own broth. So my water and onions and everything has come to a boil. Now I'm gonna add that shredded chicken. So that's about a cup and a half. I'm gonna also add my parsley now. Frozen peas and carrots, they get used in my house. They come in handy. This is a 16 ounce bag, so leave about that much in there. Add a cup of my egg noodles. That's about a cup. Bring it back to a boil and just Cook it until the noodles get soft and they're al dente. And talk about easy and simple and inexpensive. Now I'm gonna get started on my spatchcock chicken. To this food processor, I'm gonna add one and a half sticks of salted butter, parsley, thyme, and some oregano. I'm gonna also use the juice of two lemons, four cloves of garlic, freshly cracked black pepper, one teaspoon of red pepper flakes, and a teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of sherry. Give this a zap, and I'm just mixing it until it becomes very cohesive. This is great. So I have two whole roasters here. What I'm gonna do now is called spatchcocking. It's basically taking out the backbone and laying the chicken down flat. It cuts the cooking time nearly in half, and every piece of this chicken will be nice and crispy. Put that backbone to the side. You better keep that backbone, make some good stock. Two hands, press down, the breast is flat. So now I'm sticking my fingers through the skin to create some pockets where I can put this glorious butter. All right, grab my butter and the juice that's in the bowl. Mm. As soon as it hit the pot, whoo, got a whiff of that herb, got a whiff of that sherry and that garlic. Mm, 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 mm. All right, that's melted, and just brush it directly on top. Wow, look at that, you already see the seasoning in that. It is gonna be beautiful. I'm gonna cover it. I have the oven preheated to 450. I'm gonna bake it covered for 20 minutes and then uncover for 40 minutes. Mm. Oh my goodness, it smells amazing. The chicken is starting to cook. I'm just gonna use some of the juices that are at the bottom of the pan to baste, ooh. My goodness. So it's nice and basted. I'm gonna pop it back in the oven. It's still at 450. I'm gonna let it bake for an additional 40 minutes or until this skin gets really nice and brown and crispy. Now we're cooking! That is beautiful. So I'm just gonna baste it one more time. Ho oh, ho! I was craving a dry, smoked rub type chicken. So I'm gonna make this dry rub. Equal parts smoked paprika, some parsley, and some oregano. Any family member in my family, I always supply them with some house seasoning. Garlic powder, onion powder, sweet paprika, salt and pepper. 
Add just a little bit more salt. Put some brown sugar in there. It's gonna get nice and caramelized on the grill when it smokes. All right, that's done. So I got a five pound bird here, a whole roaster. Take that backbone out and that's gonna help the chicken cook much faster. And I'm gonna cut it in half. All right, there we go. What you been doing since I've been out there sweating uh, on that grill? You act like you put something on the grill. <laughs> it's like all you did was get it started. What? It's still, it's well, not. So what you doing now? I'm just rubbing the chicken down with the rub that I made with my house seasoning, the light brown sugar, uh -huh. you know, all that jazz. Getting underneath there, getting in the cavity, you know what I'm saying? You know how we do it, flavor all around. All right, Ma, thank you. Let me put this on here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get it on the grill. I like to keep the grill about 250, 300 when you're doing indirect smoking. Coals on the right side, I'm gonna put the chicken on the left. The smoke inside the grill is cooking the chicken versus directly putting it on top of the coals. It's gonna be infused with that smoky flavor. Let it stay on there for about 45 minutes to an hour. Then I'm gonna take those bad boys over. Put on the other side towards the end and get a nice little char and those grill lines on top. I'm excited. My mom loves Alabama white sauce. She puts it on every like barbecue ribs. I mean, it's better for like chicken and pork. So that's about a cup of mayo, some apple cider vinegar because it is a vinegar based sauce, about two tablespoons. Some Dijon mustard goes in there, just a squirt. Okay. A little horseradish, a little zest, a little zip, a little dry mustard in there as well. Dry mustard just complements that Dijon that we're already using. A little hot sauce, a little heat, mm -hmm. a few dashes. Salt, pepper. And I kind of like to go heavy on that pepper. Brown sugar, just to kind of mellow everything out because I'm using so much vinegar and hot sauce. The juice of half of a lemon. So it's a little tangy, it's a little sweet. So you said the vinegar is not going to be too much. That's how you like your sauce. Try to question me. <laughs> oh, excuse mm -hmm. me. Let me taste it. I think I got it now. Mm. That's it? Mm. Perfection. I'm going to taste it, because I'm the one that likes the sauce. Let's see. Mm, that's it. I taste the lemon juice. Mm -hmm. You know, I taste the vinegar. Mm -hmm. It's creamy, a little sweet. But see, what that brown sugar does is more so like mellow it out versus it being a really sweet sauce. Okay, let me finish up the chicken, and I know you're going to clean up, because that's what yes, you always do. That's exactly what I do. I clean as I go. Carde will tear up a whole kitchen. Ooh, 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 look at that chicken. It's nice and brown and pretty. Skin side down first. Most of the cooking got done over here with the indirect smoke. What I'm doing right now is just basically getting that char on the skin side. Probably around, I would say like the 12 minute mark, I'm gonna flip it over and let that other side get nice and grilled as well. So my brother thinks he's a grill master. I keep telling him, no matter where I am, whether it's Charleston, Edisto, I am still the grill master. Ain't that right, Ma? Show you right. The dogs think so. <laughs> chicken has to cook to 165. That's where it's the safe zone. Put it in the thickest part of the chicken, right here in the breast. Yep. Actually, way up to temp. So let's get it off. Ooh, you see the juices coming out of that? That smells incredible. The spices, that house seasoning, the brown sugar. These are beautiful. <laughs> oh, now we're talking. Oh, now we're smoking. <laughs> My mom used to make some really good smothered chicken growing up. Mm -hmm. So I'm making my version of a Carolina smothered chicken. Mm -hmm. Can you season the chicken with my house seasoning? What's in here? Onion powder, garlic powder, mm -hmm. salt, paprika, and pepper. And while you do that, just season, you know, you know how to season chicken. Yes. After my mom seasons the chicken, she's gonna dredge it with a little flour and the same house seasoning. Mm -hmm. Fry it not all the way through. You wanna smother and cook the chicken in the sauce. Mm -hmm but you want it to get nice and crispy. That looks good. That's pretty. That is very pretty. To make this pan sauce, I'm gonna add some butter. I've left a little bit of the oil from the fried chicken. Onions. I'm gonna saute this down. Garlic. Some minced garlic. Salt. Pepper. Mmm, that smells good, huh? Yes. And now I'm gonna add my spices. Some dried mustard, about a teaspoon of that. A half a teaspoon dried rosemary. I'm only using a half a teaspoon because it's much more pungent than using fresh herbs. Okay. Mm-hmm. Then I'm using a half a teaspoon of dried thyme. Chicken stock. Now I'm gonna use a third cup of stock. Uh -huh. And I'm just gonna let some of that stock evaporate. 
as it cooks and boils up, then it's... It's reducing. Yeah. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of Dijon mustard. It's gonna give it that tang and that pale yellow color. Now I'm gonna whisk in about one and a half cups of heavy cream. Slowly. Wow, it's thickening it up as soon as it hits the mm -hmm. heat. Oh, it smells so good. Mm -hmm. What I like to do now is add the chicken back in. For a color, I'm just adding a little bit of fresh parsley. Kind of like that contrast between dried and fresh herbs. How pretty is that? Okay. All right, so I'm gonna let this go for another 25 to 30 minutes with the top on. Oh, that's pretty. You ready to eat? Yes. All right, let's get this plated. That is gonna be juicy. <laughs> so I'm gonna get started on my fried chicken. I'm using a pickling brine. So I have two cups of water in my pot here, two tablespoons of pickling spice, one bay leaf, two tablespoons of kosher salt. And now I'm gonna add a quarter cup of sugar. I love brining my chicken because it helps the chicken retain its moisture. I'm gonna bring my mixture to a boil, a little vinegar in there. Today I'm using dark meat because I just believe that dark meat has a little bit more flavor. This is the rolling boil I'm looking for. I'm gonna turn this off and I'm gonna cool this down in a bowl of ice cubes. You don't wanna cook your chicken in the brine, so it has to be cool. You wanna make sure when you are brining your chicken that it's skin side down. So I'm gonna let my chicken sit here for about two hours. My chicken has been brining. Now it's time to take it out and get ready to fry it. Buttermilk also helps tenderize the chicken, so this is gonna be some juicy chicken. And the buttermilk also helps the dredge adhere to the chicken. You gotta have a really great dredge to make a really great fried chicken. Three cups of all-purpose flour, some salt, I'm using kosher salt, eyeballing this, some garlic powder, onion powder. I'm gonna use a sweet paprika. Give it a whisk. This is gonna be amazing. Growing up, my mom taught me how to use this paper bag. She said her grandmother taught her how to use the paper bag, so maybe that's the secret. You get a shake. See how nice and coated that is? Ooh, that's gonna be some crunchy fried chicken. That is all of my chicken. So I've got my canola oil nice and hot, about 350. I'm gonna start with my thighs because thighs take a little longer to cook. I'm gonna let this fry for about four to five minutes, then flip it over and cook it for an additional four to five minutes. All I want to do here is get it nice and golden. I'm gonna finish the cooking in the oven. Drumsticks are a little smaller, so the cooking time is a little less. I'm gonna let that cook for about three to four minutes and then flip it over and let it cook for an additional three or four minutes. All right, these are done. Oven set to 200. Pop that right in here while I finish up the rest of the meal. I think I'm smelling this chicken because I think it's done. This chicken is perfection. Chicken strips. I'm gonna coat them with my favorite potato chips. And I'm using a chip that it has a lot of flavors in it, but it's mainly like a tangy barbecue. And it's gonna taste really, really great with this honey mustard dip I'm making. So I've cut up four chicken breasts into strips before I dredge it. I wanna, of course, salt the chicken. And some pepper. One cup of flour into this baking dish. I'm gonna crack three eggs in the bowl right here. Give this a whisk. So I've crushed these chips right in the bag. So I'm gonna season the flour as well. Two teaspoons of salt, about a teaspoon of pepper, two teaspoons of onion powder, two teaspoons of garlic powder, one teaspoon of ground mustard. I decided to use ground mustard because I'm making a honey mustard sauce, so I kind of want that flavor in both the chicken and the dip. And one teaspoon of paprika. 
Let's get started. Take a strip, mix it around the flour, dip it in the egg, and directly into the chips. That flour and egg is gonna make sure that everything sticks. So when it bakes, it's gonna be super crunchy and it's gonna taste like I fried them. Being an auntie is really, really cool, especially like the aunties that don't have any children. It's like, you get to have all the fun and then send them back home. <laughs> I really do love kids. A lot of people don't know, but I went to college for child psychology and I worked with children for many, many years before cooking became a full-time thing. And I just, I don't know what it is. Just something about kids just really brings, it brings joy to my heart. I love their innocence, I love their energy, and honestly, I'm a big kid. <laughs> Parents, this is not just for kids. Aunties, uncles, you can make this for yourself. Kids will really enjoy it, but adults will really enjoy it too. All right, oven set to 450. I'm gonna check it after 10 minutes, then flip it. Now I'm gonna make the dip, lots of honey. I'm gonna use some yellow mustard. That yellow mustard is gonna give you that tangy, classic mustard flavor. Gonna use some Dijon. I'm also using stone ground Dijon, and that's gonna give it a little texture, little whole grain seeds. I would say about five tablespoons of mayo. That's gonna make it creamy. Garlic powder, because I love garlic. Salt and pepper. You can use this on anything. You can use it on your sandwiches, you can use it on a burger. You can dip some french fries in this. Mm. Let me check on those chicken strips. They are ready to be flipped. Mm -hmm. Look how pretty those are. I can tell it's nice and crispy, I can hear it. So I'm flipping it to make sure that both sides get crispy. These look amazing and they smell even better. All right, my chicken strips are done. Ooh, they are gorgeous. They're nice and brown and golden. Wait till the kids get their hands on these. What do you guys think? Love it. Thumbs up. <laughs> on a scale of one to 100, what do you give those chicken fingers? 100. Yay! <laughs> <laughs>